Okay, so got a little uh, recording I've put together with some pictures and videos to help commemorate. Um, can't even do the man justice, but just some some thoughts I thought were worth sharing that I hope John would also think would be good things to to think about when considering him and his life and everything he's done for so many people, the presence that he's been. So all those things are in the recording. But I just wanted to preface this with a uh, sort of a too long didn't watch intro uh, that I'm breaking down during a lot of it. Um, but some of the pictures and things that I've interjected are kind of funny and fun. So um, I know it's tough to watch these things. So maybe you maybe wait till you're in a good spot. I have been able to watch many of myself, so I understand where you're coming from if you can't. So with that forewarning, um, some thoughts about my dear, beloved friend, John Meadows. So I was and have been <clears throat> pondering my last conversations with my good friend, John Meadows, and I very appropriately happened across an old Chinese, perhaps Zen, proverb that goes something like, the falling tree makes more noise than the growing forest. And uh, it seemed really appropriate because uh, John was a very big tree, one of the biggest trees um, for many of us in my life, for sure. And uh, he's now fallen. But the, the wisdom of that proverb, of course, is that the rest of us are the growing forest. And we can grow and learn from the things that John showed us by example or, or just overtly taught us in everything that he left to us. So I had uh, written some things out, started writing um, just to try to get my thoughts out when I heard of John's passing. And it was way too, way too long, as some of you might have guessed, for a um, for an Instagram post, or probably for most people to even read um, on Facebook. So I figured I would just read it out loud. Um, I've been told that I have uh, John and I used to joke that we we both have uh, faces for radio, so to speak. But I've been told my voice is halfway decent, so feel free to just listen. But I am going to post some things. I'm going to compose sort of a video here uh, and post some things that I collected from the decade of having known John um, as a friend, as a fellow competitor, as a colleague, business partner. Uh, so let me um, just start with reading that. So many thoughts, so many stories that I could just tell. I'm thinking about flying in. Uh, tomorrow to Columbus. I remember the first time I flew in, John picked me up. Been there a few times now, but the first time John picked me up, and it was winter time, and we were going to shoot some video and go to Elite FDS and train, which was a blast. I think I've got some video footage I'll post to that. And uh, <laughs> I remember um, texting John as I arrived so he could pick me up in his Hummer. Some of you knew him back then. He had a, a big... It was an H2, I think, Hummer that he drove around, just giant gas guzzling monster that he reluctantly gave up, which is so funny because, you know, John's, that's the bodybuilder stereotype, driving a big truck like that. And sort of John was a bodybuilder's bodybuilder, but at the same time, he, he didn't fit so many of the negative aspects of the stereotype. So just like big badass shit too, like, like a lot of us. And I remember texting him saying, uh, it was the dead of winter, you know, but I'm coming from, at that time, Arizona, actually. And I said, I'll be the guy in shorts so he could pick me out easily. And, and uh, I, he's like, okay. So I, I get in, uh, in the Hummer, and he's, he's wearing shorts, too. <laughs> oh, man, that was really funny. Just one of those, those things. So let me, um, let me read some of the things I started writing here, and I'll probably interject. Johnny, um, 
John told me once, he, he actually preferred that. I asked him, you know, we're talking about names, middle names and things, and he actually told me that, you know, either way was fine, but he kind of liked Johnny, so I've always referred to him as Johnny since then. But I call him John, too, because everyone knows him as John. So, Johnny, um, may you rest in peace. You made the donuts, pancakes, <laughs> drop sets, and football playbooks be plentiful where you are. So... My friend John Meadows had this way of giving you a heads up before a phone call. He'd first text a message, something like yo, or just a space or a period, and then call right after. I'm going to miss that moment of being excited to hear from him. Um, and so many other things about, about Johnny. Uh, he did that just a week ago when we last when we last spoke. In the past few years, we'd chat just to catch up on whatever, a little business mixed in there, but always we'd dig in on the things that were we were most passionate about in our lives at that time, whatever they might have been. This centered around family for John, of course, but back in the day we talked about growing his website, mountaindogdiet.com, peak week strategies, our own training slash show prep and ways to torture ourselves and clients, uh, his quest for that damned IFBB Pro card, and of course the success of his clients that he was really excited about helping at the time, whoever that might have been. So lately, of course, many people have mentioned John was rapidly becoming an expert football coach. It was pretty cool. He he told me he'd done like I wanted to say like fifty seven seminars or something like that in the past year. So he just loved it and he got to spend more time with his sons and doing this and he really uh, enjoyed being with the athletes that are were on the way up on the rise. John attacked football with this, all the same vigor and love he put into bodybuilding. And it was really wonderful to hear the exuberance in his voice. There's so many memories of Johnny I like to share, both written and in the pics and videos here, in part because these are just a few of the examples of how John was a good person to me and others behind the scenes when no one was looking. That's important. You know, that's, that's the thing we can take is that John was an exemplar, so to speak, for us. Um, they are fond memories of mine because they're my friend. And they're important because they demonstrate a life well lived. And I think nearly everyone could use a reminder of that now and again, myself included. So back in 2012, John was there backstage with me, absolutely elated and happier than even I was when I was called alongside him to be among the top six of the first, for the first of several times we competed together at the NPC Masters Nationals. John got second that year, I think. One of many year, years he got took second. This is one of my fondest competition memories ever. Um, more so than probably many of the small shows where I ended up in first place. Because of that sense of camaraderie, I felt John's sincere happiness with my success. It was really cool. All the way up, there you go. All the way up. Tears of joy, by the way. John and I would talk for hours and share emails on the topic about ways to bring more, quote, good, unquote, to the bodybuilding industry. Things like doing right by all our clients, famous and the not so renowned alike, which isn't always the case among coaches. Uh, when I helped out with Granite Supplements, where he was when he was founding the company, we focused on honest business practices, things like the need for full label transparency and scientifically supported ingredient dosing. That's why he brought me in. Um, years back, Johnny confided to me that in the grand scheme of things, he really wanted to build and leave a legacy of solid information for bodybuilders of the future to pay back and pay forward what he'd learned and been taught I'm 100% sure that he's done that with his training programs, books, his website, and his YouTube channel. 
we're really incredibly lucky to have had, had Johnny with all that he produced. There's just a giant library of absolute gold out there for everyone. <sighs> so to help make, make that happen, we kind of thought about how you know, he could do these things. We'd strategize ways to make a bigger splash in social media. We agreed that maybe some kind of an attention-grabbing gimmick might help out, and you guess it, you guessed it. That's that's the infamous ultimate mountain dog was born, mercilessly brandishing a folding chair and leaving a wake of innocent bystander, bystanders in his path. That was a bold move on Johnny's part, and uh, kind of jaw-dropping, but um, <laughs> so even more funny given you know how really Johnny was kind of a gentle giant. He, his hamstrings, when he flexes them, right, you know, and it's in the right position, that thing hangs. I mean, it, it hangs like fucking horse balls. I mean, it just, <laughs> it just hangs like you can't believe. And I saw this you need as a comparison fit anytime I can find an exercise that's going to be able to... If a client ever came up in conversation, it would usually be me who asked, wanting to check in on Johnny. For instance, the contest placing not had, might not have gone as planned or was somewhat disappointing. He always turned the exchange towards figuring out how to do his best by that client, just wanting to help. Like that's that's one of the one of the really coolest aspects of our conversations. Is he would he was really trying to figure out, and he'd come to me, and maybe he thought I you know had an insight about human nature that he he might not have had. And he was so humble in that regard. Um, he wanted to figure out how to do the best by his clients, regardless of the circumstances. That's, that's just how he rolled. All right, hi everybody. You know what I like to do? I like to bring in people that are smarter than me. <laughs> and today I have brought in the ultimate genius, <laughs> Dr. <Wiley> Scott. Coyote? <laughs> <laughs> so this guy I have a tremendous amount of respect for. I consider him literally the smartest man in the industry and a good friend. So today we're going to be training chest and we're going to be talking about uh, how to build your chest and some different cues along the way. So stay tuned and get ready for an awesome chest workout. One of uh, the favorite and most memorable days of my life, literally, truly a day of bodybuilders Valhalla was spent with Johnny in Columbus during the week of the Arnold Classic a few years ago. We trained in the morning, filming and teaching the gym, and I think a clip I'm gonna add in here is, is maybe from that, one of those videos. All right, so we're here at American Barbell, and I'm here with the smartest man in bodybuilding, my friend Scott Stevenson, and I got a special treat for you today. For those of you who aren't familiar with Fortitude training, Scott's gonna take me through a shoulder workout and a tricep workout. Now stay tuned until the end, okay? Because you need to understand how this fits into a weekly program. So just stay tuned, check this out. This is awesome stuff. And we went to IHOP, gorged on pancakes while filming more Q&A and headed back to his place where the post IHOP carb coma hit us both really hard. We just crashed. He said, I'm going for a nap. He went up to the bedroom, took a nap. I fell asleep on his couch. <coughs> A few hours later, we took advantage of a chance to train yet again with the crew of crazy Canucks. Fuad was there, Antoine was there, five, five or six of us, maybe seven of us total, and we trained back that day. Um, after which, we went and destroyed an inhuman amount of sushi, followed by a visit to a sorbet slash ice cream slash frozen yogurt shop. If heaven is anything like a repeating Groundhog Day, I hope. This is one of the days that Johnny gets to relive at least a time or two where he is. That was awesome. Thank you for that day, John. Johnny was, he was in fact human, um, despite his, in stage on stage, his insane on stage conditioning. Um, we always used to laugh that uh, this whole thing about his colon was just, you know, excuse so he could get a, a, a bodybuilder's advantage because he never retained water, ever. And he'd rant now and again when we were together on a phone call, um, but I think it was a healthy outlet for him. And 
because he was trying to be positive all the time with everyone. And I'm really honored that I could, that he felt like he could do that with me. <laughs> Try not to make this hard for you guys to watch. I know it's tough to see people losing their shit, but here we go. During our last phone call, only about a week ago now, he wanted to catch up and share with me a deep and important conversation he'd had recently because he sensed I would get it, you know. And he just wanted to share the important stuff, you know. The video likes and supplement sales, those are important, of course. But Johnny was ultimately about meaning and making a difference. It was a privilege to share the deeply meaningful moments with John when we had the chance and mutually shine perspective for one another in the way that good friends do. Johnny once told me a few years back when I was considering whether I would compete that year that I should, quote, do it, man, while you have the chance. We can't do this forever. I'm sure you can imagine him saying that. <laughs> that stuck with me back then in that moment and each day as a reminder of how transient this life can be. We both, quote, seize the day, unquote, that competition year, each stepping on stage several times while comparing notes and coordinating our personal and client, quote, experiments to come up with what I now call the peak week advanced loading strategy. So thanks to John for helping uh, kind of devise, devise the uh, nuts and bolts of that. And yes, we, we had a few things that we tried that didn't make the cut. Um, I remember in this last conversation with Johnny, we were talking about uh, when he came to Tampa to compete. And that was, the, there was the Tampa Pro show, and the, I think the week later, maybe it was two weeks later, I think it was just one San Antonio show that year. A lot of you have probably seen the, the picture of John in the sauna suit when we, we created a makeshift sauna in his hotel room to uh, so he could make weight for the 212s. Uh, we did that because we had a strategy that we developed when he came to Tampa. He literally just kind of showed up and wasn't going to make weight. He uh, weighed in. Steve Weinberger gave him a chance to make weight. <laughs> we, were, we were laughing. I don't know if we ever told this, anyone's ever told this story, he or I. But uh, I just sort of just stepped in as like was tried to, you know, help him any way possible. You know, that's kind of what I said. If, you know, you're here, buddy. Whatever I can do, man. So he had like maybe two hours and we went up to the, uh, the, the locker room for the, the workout area in the hotel. And uh, Johnny sensed he needed to poop, but he couldn't poop. So I, I did abdominal massage on him to get him to poop. And then we, uh, we got in the sauna in there. And it was a, it was a sauna that was a purely electric sauna um, and there literally was a sign, one of the jack up the steam to get in a sweat more to drop water. And there was literally a sign, do not pour water on the sauna because risk of electrocution. Because it wasn't the kind where you're supposed to water the rocks. It's just supposed to like run on its own and do its own thing. But still, because we wanted, we, we had to make weight. Otherwise, you know, that was it. We had to make this shit happen. So uh, Johnny was lying there, you know, suffering with the weight. I think he might have been moving around, like standing up and kind of, you know, trying to expend some energy to drop the weight. And I was literally like dousing the rocks with little bits of water and trying to make sure that it was just short enough so there wasn't a stream of water that the electricity could flow back into and, and zap me. Um, it's, it's pretty comical. <clears throat> Neither of us suffered any electrocution that day. And um, we made it through. And the next week he said, ah, I think I'm going to need you again here in San Antonio, so Johnny flew me in, and um, that's where that sauna strategy came, which I, we don't, that, that, that's not in the book, that's not a recommended strategy, but, um, you know, we followed him closely, so, uh, just a good memory I wanted to share. Most important about all this really is, well, two things. One is that I want to send my most Sincere condolences out to Mary and their sons, Jonathan and Alexander, and the extended family. 
John gave to us, his friends, followers, fans, acquaintances, people who knew him, more than could ever be expected in so many ways. But John's love for his family was really infinite. And I feel an ineffably deep sorrow knowing how much that love will be missed by them. I hope they'll take solace in knowing that he indeed loved them as much as humanly possible. Of that there is no doubt. But going forward, we're the growing trees, right? As I ponder what it might be like to talk one last time to John about what's going on in my life and what I might be thinking about doing but haven't done, I can imagine him once again providing wise perspective and saying something like, do it now, man, don't wait. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny for being a friend, a brother in arms, a fellow competitor, a business partner, colleague, confidant, and a genuine person who was a shining example of someone who was always trying to do his best, despite his flaws, despite his imperfections. John would always admit that to you, the things he doesn't know. He always built me up so much, he did for so many other people. As anyone reading this might be wondering what to do with this loss, I think Johnny might laugh a little bit and be suggesting, but really the thing we could do is ask, maybe this should go on a t-shirt too, John loved t-shirts, what would JM do? Right? Indeed, what would John Meadows do in your situation? You can ask yourself, when it comes to your family time, pursuing your passions and dreams, Tackling your next work project, taking care of your dog, setting up for your next working set in the gym, right? And deciding whether or not to get the blueberry or the chocolate chip pancakes. I'd wager that if you can come up with, with what you feel is a solid answer to that question, you've got a pretty god darn good game plan for doing the right thing. And more importantly, a good start on living a life worth remembering. I love you, Johnny. <laughs> and I'll miss you always, my friend. <sighs> Thank you, everyone, for listening. Hope this was helpful. Whew. Hmm.